Bob, the electric principal, and I spent 32 years in education, 15 of those as a principal. I've also spent the last three years in the automotive industry. Today, uh, I'm going to answer some questions that I've had from a few customers uh, who own 21s. They bought some of the first ID4s that came out and some of the early 22s. Uh, and those cars uh, came with the older software. And they've all been very patient waiting uh, for VW to update the software. And some people have been waiting two years and this has been put off and put off and put off, but it's finally happening. And the thing about this is, is that it is a process. This is Principal Bob, the electric principal, and I am here at Ed Carroll VW today in the service department with Austin. Say hi, Austin. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> and uh, Austin is doing a couple of things today. You know, we have had people waiting for two years to get an update on their 2021 ID4s. And the days are here and we're finally getting that job done. And this particular VW has already had uh, the update. How long did that take, Austin, when you, from the time you start to you finish doing the update? Yeah, so about the time we start flashing the first part of the procedure is about a two hour procedure. And then there's two other procedures afterwards that are about three hours a piece. So it can take up to seven, eight hours to completely reflash these vehicles. There's about 39 modules that get reflashed when we do them all. Right. And how many, how many of these are you doing a week? Um, right now, just because of the size of our service department, we're only doing about one a week because there's only about two techs that are qualified to do it. So it takes a while to get them through. And that's one of the reasons why you have to have a little patience if you're waiting for that update because uh, it does take some time. So I know one of them is, a, is, is you're basically, you said there's two other things that you have to do. What are those two things that you do? Um, so the first part of that reflashing update we do is um, updates the ICAST module, which is a new module for Volkswagens, which that runs all your infotainment stuff on there. Um, and then the rest of the flask basically updates all the modules and the battery here, um, and then also the drivetrain components. That's what the other two are for. Yep, so this is not a small update. Some people think we're just, you know, making the, putting the uh, park hold in, the, in your car when you get that update. It is much more than that. And this particular car over here, I want to just, is, is uh, uh, having one of the modules checked because one of the things that's happening is a lot of ID4s are coming in the shop. We're checking all the modules that make up the battery. Uh, there are 12 modules that really make up your battery. And people always ask me, it's like, well, how much does it cost to replace the whole battery? Well, we usually that's not what we do. If there's an issue with the battery, it's with one section. Uh, and so we replace one section. So this particular car is having one of the modules uh, replaced. And so the video today, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of what this software update does and what you can expect in terms of the interface you have with your car when this procedure is done. Thank you so much, Austin, for doing this. You're Austin's one of our, our best mechanics, and I appreciate him taking some time to do that. Thanks. You're very welcome, Bob. All right. Have a good one. And so the purpose of this video today is to really go over the factors, uh, the, the items that are improved step by step. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll, uh, uh, I had auto hold just kick in. That's one of them that they fixed. Uh, we'll go through it step by step uh, and we'll uh, uh, get that out to the public. And right now I'm following an old Nissan Altima that is smoking like crazy. I mean, it's just pouring out smoke which is one of the reasons I like to drive electric because my car is not gonna pour out tons of black smoke as I go up a hill. But I digress, so I tell you what, let's start with step one and talk about these changes. And what I'm gonna do is as I do that, I'll show you uh, each one of them, uh, what impact that they have and show you what they look like and we'll go from there. So thanks again for joining my channel and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, and if you like this video, go ahead. I realize that the audience for this vi video might be a little smaller uh, because a lot of people are driving 22s and 23s and they don't have to worry about updated software. But for those of you who are enjoying this video, please uh, like it, please uh, join the channel. That's how it grows. I love making these videos and you can help me make these videos uh, by giving me a thumbs up, 
and subscribing to my channel. So here we go. So one of the most exciting things that uh, VW did was uh, they created uh, a new screen uh, on your uh, steering column uh, over here. And on this particular menu, you're going to notice that you've got, right now I've got listed the, uh, sorry about that. Uh, one of the things they created was this menu over here that has uh, long-term data. Uh, and right now, this car has been driven 72 miles. Uh, it's getting 2.9 miles per kilowatt, mostly because I just want a horse tooth. I, you know, I just climbed up about 1,500 feet. Uh, and I can change that by simply hitting the OK button over here. And right here is the location. You can see that with my thumb. Uh, and now it's since the last charge. Since this car was charged, it's been averaging 3.3 miles per kilowatt. You see that right here. 68 miles, an average speed of 27. If I click the OK button again, now it's going to tell me the last nine miles I've had a lead foot going uphill. I've only gotten two miles per kilowatt hour, which is, which is uh, not the greatest, but obviously going uphill. Uh, and I can switch between these anytime I want to. And so that's a really nice uh, feature that you now have with the 3.01 software. The other thing I want to show you over here is on this side of the screen, uh, it's going to give you the percentage and the miles that you have remaining uh, in your battery in kilowatt hours. Now, um, to, to, to be honest with you, before what we used to have, or what you used to have was just a mileage meter that was part of the guess meter You know, I mean, basically it was just telling you, based on your last X number of miles, this is what we think you have left. Well, if you're going uphill, obviously it goes down. If you're going downhill, uh, you know, your car's regenning like crazy, you would add miles. Uh, and what people really wanted is give me a percentage. What is the percent of battery I have left? That doesn't change uh, based on my last 10, 15, 20 miles. It doesn't change at all. I could kind of guess how much energy I have left. Uh, and, you know, I know I have an 82 kilowatt battery. All but five of that is usable. Uh, and based on those little factors in my head, I could kind of tell what my range really is. So I much prefer this newer system where we have percentage laid out and we don't have uh, just the miles. So that's one of the other changes that uh, VW has given you. One of the other things that's changed is uh, we've pulled out the charging menu from the vehicle and made it uh, have its own uh, icon. Uh, makes it simpler to get to and when you hit charging um, it's going to look fairly similar to the way it did before but you notice it's going to give you miles it's going to give you percentage here but the big thing is that when you start charging um, you're going to see that give you uh, how many kilowatts are going into your battery uh, before it used to give you miles per hour now it gives you both it gives you miles per hour and it gives you uh, the kilowatts. And once again, just a nice feature, just a nice touch uh, that makes it more understandable. Nobody really wants to do the math that if I'm getting 30 miles per hour, what does that really mean? You know, I mean, that, that doesn't make sense. Tell me how many kilowatts I'm getting. I know that if I'm averaging three miles per kilowatt, uh, it's simple mathematics to figure out, okay, if I am charging right now at a, 150 kilowatts per hour that's really 450 miles worth of energy and so the math becomes easier so it's a much better way to do it i'm, I'm really pleased with that change okay, the other thing that you've got uh with this menu and it's very important is is that now when you set your locations like right here i'm going to add a location to it right now i'm going to add a location i'm just going to put HM for home, even though I'm in the middle of uh, Horse Tooth Reservoir. Now I've got my charging menu, and you know, it doesn't look much different than it did before. I can set my time of when I want it to start charging. You know, I'm not touching the screen here, I'm just barely doing this, right? Right now, this is set for 7 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, that I will be charging the car. But to be honest, in the early versions of the software, this didn't work well at all. It, it did not. Uh, and so you'd end up charging your car. I'd, I'd try to charge the car and I would get to 
maybe 60% and it would just cut out. Well, now this system works nicely. Uh, I've talked to multiple customers uh, and it all works for them at home. And so that is a major update that you're going to see in terms of uh, the functionality. All right. So I, I, I think that's a, that's a good thing. All right. The other feature I want you to realize that you've got now is a feature called auto hold. And in the past, what would happen when Volkswagen first came out with the ID4 is they, they had to drive like any other car. You take your foot off the brake and if the car is in drive, the car's going to roll. Uh, and every car does that. Try it on your on your gas powered car sometime. You'll you'll see you take your foot off the brake, it rolls. And so VW said, well, we're trying to make these cars work like a regular gasoline car, so the transition is easier. That was part of the thought. But they forgot about one thing. This car is almost silent. And so when you took your foot off the brake and if you and it was in drive, uh, and you didn't have it in the park menu. Well, all of a sudden the car started rolling and we literally had a customer who uh, brought their uh, car back after a test drive, uh, was looking for the key because dropped the key on the floor, took his foot off the brake and was busy looking for the key. And in 15 seconds, the car had slowly rolled into a new Tiguan. So VW thought, well, you know, that was a great concept, but maybe it didn't work. And so one of the things I want to show you is that if you go to the top of the menu up here and pull it down, you have this auto hold feature. I highly recommend you using auto hold. I, I think it's a good thing. Take your foot off the brake. Uh, the car's not going to roll. We'll go back to that once again. If You can always turn it on and off. And of course, you always can use your own preferences. But I'm think an auto hold is a great thing. Uh, right after that Tiguan accident with an ID4, I thought that's what they ought to do and they did it. And so that's the other big change that you're going to see. So one other thing they've tried to improve is uh, finding charging stations. All I need to do is press the charging button right here and it's going to look up charging stations in the vicinity. And then I can go in here and start to scroll and you're going to see all of the charging stations that are in the area and I can scroll down and sure enough Audi Ford Collins also VW has a 50 kilowatt charger uh, but it's still showing you a lot of smaller chargers and in general folks I'm you know VW has made improvements in this but I'm going to recommend to you that you use PlugShare and use uh, Electrify America ch uh, charging software to go find find char large chargers uh, because really when I'm going to charge, I'm really looking for 50 kilowatt or more if I'm going to fast charge. Uh, I don't really have problems finding the, the smaller ones and PlugShare does a better job. So even though this is a nice update by VW, it's still not better, in my opinion, than PlugShare and uh, Electrify America. And I'm actually going to put out a video on how to road trip and find those stations using using that software. Uh, but for the most part, folks, uh, you know, the specialized software that's out there is better. Uh, some people use a better route planner. I'm not a fan of that uh, because it, it'll tell you, you know, which chargers to go to and how long to charge. But it's all based on guesstimates. It's all based on, on um, you know, uh, how, how your car should be doing. Uh, you can buy some, some uh, uh, devices that help you along with that. But, you, you know, you still have to think. And so through my experience of, of driving both Teslas and through uh, driving VWs, I still simply like PlugShare for either platform better than anything else and, and do my own thinking and figure out how long I have to charge somewhere and where my next station is. So those are the major updates that you get uh, with VW. Most of them are very good. The latter is, is, is suspect. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is what doesn't it fix? Because it doesn't fix everything. Uh, uh, number one is you're really not going to get faster charging speed. I mean, a lot of people want their 21s to charge like a 23 at 150 kilowatts instead of 125 or 135 kilowatts. It's not going to happen because really the 23s charge faster, not just because of software. Mostly it's because they use a different battery. Uh, so they use an SK battery made by a different Korean company. That battery has the ability to charge faster. So it's not going to fix that. And the other thing people are disappointed in is that uh, the 23s 
uh, can self park. Uh, and 21s and 22s can't do that. And even with the new software, you're not gonna fix that problem uh, because there's a sensor located on the 23s just above the rear uh, wheel well. And that's what allows you to do the self-parking feature. All the software changes in the world aren't gonna help you with that uh, because you don't have that and we don't have a retrofit to get that. Um, so those are some of the things you aren't going to get. But to sum it up, you're going to get a lot of benefits. And I think information and data is number one. Uh, they fix their uh, charging uh, system in terms of actually charging the car, uh, in terms of protocol. And you, you've got that nice auto hold feature, which, which I really like. Uh, probably of all the changes, that's my favorite. Uh, I use it all the time uh, in my 21, uh, and I think you'll like it too. So once again, Principal Bob, the electric principal, thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you have any other questions or concerns, type them below. My, my audience is really well informed. Most of the time they can give you a, an answer quicker than I can. Uh, and we'll see you soon uh, with my next couple of videos, one on a Ford Mustang, another one that I'm doing is on road tripping, and the third one that's coming is my Tesla uh, VW video. So thanks again for joining me. Bob Flurdy, The Electric Principal.